and I applaud you and Anthony for being brave and 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 just you know going out there to get the truth for all of us. But let's let's come back to the topic at hand: black-eyed children. This is a pretty scary topic, in my opinion, because when you think of children, you think of innocence, you think of of, of purity. You don't think of the possibility of these kids being evil. It's it's contrary to our emotions. So, first of all, describe what a black-eyed children is. This phenomena, essentially, <clears throat> these are children that are showing up at at completely seemingly at random. They show up at people's doorsteps, their places of business. Uh, they approach cars and parking lots. They usually fall between the ages of 8 and 13 years old. It's what we hear the most. They have pale skin. Uh, they have completely black eyes, not just the pupil, but the entire sclera. The whole eye is solid black. It's actually one of my favorites just because it's so strange, from London. And it's a gentleman who came home. He lived in a secure building. He, you know, it's keyed entry. He goes in, he goes upstairs, he lives on the second floor. He goes in his, his apartment, and he's inside, he's grabbing a beer or something, and he hears this loud thump in the hallway. And he kind of pauses for a moment, he thinks, that's, that's strange. And a few seconds later, he hears it again. He goes and opens his door, and here are two kids standing at his doorstep, uh, at his door, uh, and... He proceeds to have this encounter with these black-eyed kids. They're, they're saying these strange things to him. He's a gentleman who has traveled around the world. He was actually got part of his education in America, uh, but he's, he's an English native, a British native. And he said that these kids, it, it was almost like someone doing a poor imitation of a British accent. Mm-hmm. So they're saying things to him like, we, we want to come in and watch the telly. And... He's looking up and down the hallway. He's thinking, who are these kids? You know, he's asking them where their parents are. He begins to get nervous. He turns his head to because he's standing holding uh, the door handle of his door. So the door is partially open. He turns and glances inside thinking that he needs something to defend himself. In those few seconds of, of glancing in his apartment and turning back to the kids, all of a sudden there are three of them. They've multiplied. They have multiplied. Now, uh, this is a hallway that has nothing in it. <laughs> you know, it's completely up. There's nowhere this third child could have been hiding. And, you know, this is sort of enough for him. He ends up, you know, slamming the door and getting away from these kids. And he's, uh, I believe he was in the process of, of calling his neighbor down the hall or something when he hears that thumping noise again out in the hallway. And when he goes gets up the nerve and looks back out in the hall, these kids are gone. Now, it was interesting because when I spoke with him, he told me that he believed that this weird noise that he heard uh, were the kids arriving and leaving. Arriving and leaving. How so? uh, That's the only time that I've heard that from one of these accounts. But this this gentleman is very credible. He's a government employee. Uh, he's a well that that doesn't get necessarily good credibility, but, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know he was a very uh, very composed, very educated man, and has never had any kind of encounter like this in his life. But um, you know, there it was uh, again, something very strange thrown into the mix that we haven't seen in other cases. You've accumulated a lot of this witness testimony, and if it happened to me, one thing is seeing a UFO. And I think I'm okay by going and reporting it. But with this situation, there's something inside me that says, you can't talk about this to anybody because you are really going to be considered crazy. How are these people, where are they going before they talk to you? Are they going anywhere else? You know, um, there's a couple of answers to that. One is that most of these people, they don't want to talk about the encounter very much. Uh, They they end up coming to me, and uh, I know a couple of other investigators that have gotten a few similar stories. They sometimes seek out people like us because they're hoping to get an explanation. And, you know, I think a lot of the time they're hoping to hear that there's a rational explanation for what they encountered. But, you know, unfortunately, there's not. 
um, what does happen in a large portion of these cases is that the people turn towards uh, spiritual pursuits. Now, it's often that they will go back to whatever their uh, upbringing reflected. You know, if they were raised Catholic, they'll start going back to the Catholic Church. Um, sometimes they will simply start exploring other uh, spiritual pathways because they're looking for comfort and they're looking for, you know, something that makes them feel uh, safe and secure. You know, I, I've had um, – there are a good portion of stories that are quite disturbing and that I could not publish in the book, even under the promise of, of making the person anonymous because a good portion of these people believe that too much focus on these children will cause them to come back into their lives. So they think that even if it's anonymous, that they will know you are because referring the story to them. story will be out there. That's correct. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And one of your witnesses said, quote, they don't break the rhythm, nor do they respond if you ask them questions, which sounds, again, like a man in black, right? Yes, yes. They, they simply redirect. And, you know, they say things that uh, – and again, this sort of harkens to the men in black. They say things that don't quite make um, – it's just not normal language. Uh, here's an example. There's a story that's not in the book. It was published on my blog uh, a brief, brief while ago, and it's um, about an encounter that a gentleman in Texas had. And this encounter was very fascinating because there was an animal present, uh, the gentleman's pet pit bull. And this gentleman came home from the store. He uh, lives in the Dallas metro area, doesn't have anything pretty much in his yard. You know, it's wide open. He walks up to the front door, and he has bags in his hand. He opens the door, and all of a sudden he realizes that standing on the ground just to the right of the steps is a young boy and he was completely puzzled of course because he didn't see this boy there you know when he walked up and this young man looks at the gentleman and he says is it food time is it food time as a dinner is it food time <laughs> and uh you know this gentleman said that he he just he got it chill when this boy said this. I mean, first of all, he's trying to puzzle through what the hell does this kid mean? You know, nobody talks like that. And, you know, this this boy uh, what had solid black eyes, very drab clothing, pale skin. And here's the other interesting part to this encounter. This gentleman had a has a three-year-old pit bull. He raised from a puppy. His house has solid wood floors. He could hear the dog barking towards the back of the house and coming closer. And there's sort of a, a, a hallway that leads up to his front door going into the living room. And he told me that he heard that dog and saw the dog come around the corner in the living room and run at a run coming towards the front door. When he got about uh, two-thirds of the way to the front door, this animal tried to put the brakes on. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people know what I'm talking about. When you see an animal, you know, at a full run, all of a sudden yep. trying to stop. This dog uh, pretty much fell over himself, turned around at this gentleman's feet with his tail between his legs, his head down, whining, running back into the house to get away from this black-eyed kid. Uh, the dog ended up hiding under the, the bed in the master bedroom for for a long time. This gentleman just had a great difficulty getting this dog out. He was completely puzzled because this dog, he has seen this dog face down rattlesnakes. He's never seen this dog frightened. And, you know, he's frightened by this kid. And, uh, you know, here we have this kid in, in the yard saying strange things like, I think it's food time. You should invite me in. 
<laughs> and, and you know, it, it was enough. This this gentleman, you know, he kind of ducked in his house very quickly and closed the door. And he said that, uh, you know, he, he put the things down, his bags down, and he ended up going to another room and looking through the blinds and uh, had a good view of the yard. And this kid was nowhere to be seen. Uh, Do the children it, speak with a with an accent? There are a few occasions where uh, people say that the children are, it's like they're attempting an accent. But, you know, I've had accounts from Spanish speakers who encountered these kids, and the kids are speaking fluent Spanish. Hmm. So it's almost as if they're able to, you know, adapt to any particular situation that they decide to walk into. And people, again, report that they have a hypnotic quality, just like the grace, and they feel compelled to just do what they were asked to do and having fear at the same time. How could these kids unnerve even the most sturdy personalities? That's a really good question, Mel. Uh, you know, a lot of things have been speculated on. I've had people tell me that it uh, – I had one person who was a law enforcement officer – <clears throat> who told me that he thought it was, he believed it was some type of infrasound-like effect mm -hmm. because of how, of how it affected his nervous system. And, you know, I, I should add at this point, we haven't really addressed it, there are very, very few commonalities among the victims of these kids. But one of the curious uh, things I have found is that there's a very interesting... Uh, it, it, there's a large number of people that are in positions of authority that have encountered these kids. Law enforcement personnel, military personnel, uh, government employees or officials, um, medical professionals. And, you know, I, I, I'm not quite sure what that means yet, but I do find it very strange. Uh, it's interesting in that a lot of these people are trained observers, so they tend to notice more in the encounter. But at the same time, these are people that you would not expect to back down or be frightened 